Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us settle. Are we settled? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we continue to dwell in your presence. Thank you so much, O Lord God, for the movement of the Holy Spirit that we are experiencing and we are encountering and we are enjoying this day, O God. Holy Spirit, we continue to ask you to lead us in our service today, even as we study your word. Holy Spirit, give us a receptive heart. Give us a receptive mind. Holy Spirit, open each and everyone's heart so that every words that will come out from this pulpit will be inculcated in our hearts. Holy Spirit, we pray that you manifest yourself. Holy Spirit, we pray that we can vividly experience you and see you and encounter you today. Holy Spirit, thank you for the lives of all these people that were gathered here today. Those people who were joining us online and those people who will join or will come across this message in the future. We pray, O Lord, that whatever your will and purposes in their lives will be accomplished by you today. We have heard testimonies. We have heard the exhortation from your people today. And Lord, we are blessed. And Father God, we thank you because you are going to minister to us, Father God. You are not yet finished. And Lord, I just pray for the sanctifying blood of your son, Jesus. Cover your servant, Father God. Lord, cover your servant. That Father God, none of these people, Father God, would just be mere looking and staring and listening to this person standing in front. But I pray that hide me behind you, that I pray that cloth me with the most precious blood of your son, Jesus. And thank you, Lord. I pray that you cleanse my mouth, that you tame my tongue, Father God. Give me a clean heart. Give me a clean spirit. Give me a clean soul, Father God. I am just your mouthpiece. I am just your instrument, Father God. And cause it, Father God, that whatever words that you have revealed upon your servant, that I can have that justice, Father God, to share it to your people who are willing to listen today. Thank you, Lord. We rebuke the works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy, and we bind whatever power, whatever forces, Father God, our um, senses, Father God. We rebuke it, Lord, whatever are the works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will hinder us in receiving from you today. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Welcome to each and every one of us. I can see uh, there are new faces. I can see that uh, there are faces that we have seen before, and uh, we are seeing them again today. Um, church, can we give that uh, taste of uh, see your smile to each and every one? Feel, uh, let them feel welcome. You are welcome, my dear brothers and sisters. From the left to the right and from the front to the back. And uh, welcome. You are all welcome. Um, uh, we are blessed that we are able to spend this wonderful time together in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed that we are able to spend this wonderful time in the house of the Lord. And although, yes, uh, I know you cannot wait. I too can't wait for the birthday celebration of Zephaniah. But uh, before that, the Lord has prepared a feast for us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And although, um, uh, well, it is a grand day. We have, been, uh, we have been enjoying the presence of the Lord this morning and we are going to enjoy whatever uh, feast that the family has prepared. Um, I I'm not spoiling the moment, my dear brothers and sisters. But I want to encourage you with this strong statement. I want to encourage us with, oh, by the way, before I forget, I thank the Lord for all the lives of the brothers and sisters who stood here in front today. 
whom the Lord used to lead us and usher us in experiencing His glory today. Amen? Did you enjoy the morning? Can we give the Lord a clap offering for the life of our dear brothers and sisters? We thank you so much and it is our prayer that may the Lord continue to fan into flames those talents and giftings and uh, that the calling that the Lord has called you upon. Amen? Hallelujah, church. Praise you, Jesus. It never happened. Usually, message starts at 11, but uh, it just shows how much we are enjoying the morning because uh, we're running a little bit late. Well, a little bit late. Amen? So, um, uh, I encourage each and everyone, for the first time, if you have been coming to church, I never ask this, but I encourage each and everyone, look at your neighbors and tell them, I have my eye on you. I have my eye on you, and I am aware you have your eye on me. Amen? So let's concentrate in the word of the Lord, especially those people who came to visit us. If there is a word, if there is a word that, if there is a message of the Lord that you will hear for the last time, if there is a message of the Lord that you will hear for the last time, I pray that this would be the one. And I pray that the Lord will manifest and I pray that the Lord will work His power in glory to address all of us. Amen, church? And like I say, I want to encourage us with this statement. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Here. That's our message today. Don't be a fool. Don't be foolish. Amen? The Bible calls three kinds of people fools. The first one, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Psalms chapter 14 verse 1, Psalms chapter 53 verse 1, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Is that not a fitting definition of an atheist? An atheist, someone who denies the existence of God. Someone who does not believe in God. So when somebody walks around, if you knew people, if you know people at home, at work, your neighbor, in the community, or maybe sometimes we do not have to look further. Maybe sometimes we just have to look in the mirror. And if you knew people, if you know somebody who walks around and said that there is no God, the description of the Bible to that person is a fool. You know the reason why a lot of people do not believe in God? The reason why that a lot of people does not acknowledge God? You know why? Because we ourselves, we want to be the God of our lives. Most of the time, or maybe all the time, we want to be the God of our life. My dear brothers and sisters, a lot of times in history, world leaders, Hitler, a lot of men in history, they played God. A lot of men in history, they want to be God. But my dear brothers and sisters, there's only one time when God became man. Amen, church? There is only one time when God became man. And God has a name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we declare that by faith? Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Amen, church. Hallelujah. He came 2,000 years ago and He became a man. He did not forsake 
His heavenly place, He did not forsake divinity to embrace humanity. He was fully God and a fully man at the same time. He is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Hallelujah, church. Amen. The only reason that an atheist cannot find God is the same reason that a criminal cannot find a police station. I'm telling you the truth. The only reason that an atheist cannot find God is the same reason that a criminal cannot find a police station. So my dear brothers and sisters, Psalms 14, verse 1, Psalms 53, verse 1, it says in there, the fool said that there is no God. Hallelujah. But how about us? Is there a God? Are we a fool? Psalms chapter 19, verses 1 to 2, it says in here, if you look at the heavens above, if you look at the sky above, the heavens declare the glory of God. Hallelujah. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. And night after night, it says in there, they reveal knowledge. Amen, church? If you look at the heavens, if you look at your environment, if you look at the places, if you look at the sky, if you look at the birds flying, the birds can float, the birds can fly against gravity. The birds declare the glory of God, church. There is a God. Amen. The creation declares that there is a God. The creation carries, um, what's this that is in us? Our basic bill, DNA. The creation carries DNA of God. Amen. And so as every human being, we have a unique DNA. Amen. And the Lord, I mean the creation carries a DNA of God. Amen, church. There are a lot of people who are incarcerated in prison at the moment. There are a lot of people that are imprisoned at the moment, my dear brothers and sisters, that although nobody can put this, them in the sin of the crime, that although nobody have witnessed that they have created the crime, but because their DNA is found in the sin of the crime, they were deemed guilty. Amen? Amen, church. No one saw them committed the crime. No one can put them on that place during the time of the crime. But because their DNA is the sin of the crime, they were deemed guilty. Amen, church. Were there any eyes who saw how the Lord created the world, the heavens and the earth? May nakakita po ba sa atin? Were, were there any witness? Wala. But the creation speaks and shout of the DNA of God. Amen, church? Are, we, are you with me? Amen? Hallelujah. So the fool said in his heart, there is no God. A fool does not mean that he is not educated. A fool does not mean that he is not smart. It just simply means that he denies. It just simply means that he does not encourage the basic building block of the creation. It denies the basic reality of his existence. Amen, church. As an example, I brought us a painting. Can you see that? Okay, let's uh, put, uh, what's that? Beading. 
50 pounds. Anyone? Ala una. 55 pounds. You know. My dear brothers and sisters, can you see this painting? That's a beautiful one, isn't it? Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, would you believe me if I say that this painting was a result of accidental explosion of paint? Would anyone believe me? No? I have a mobile phone in here as well. Where's my mobile phone? Your mobile phone. Would you believe if I tell you that your mobile phone was due to an accidental explosion of metal? People who were outside and they heard that wonderful singing, they heard that wonderful praise and worship to the Lord. And they came in and they said that, where is that music coming from? And I'm gonna tell them that, oh no, that, that was a result of accidental explosion of sounds. Would anybody believe me? Nobody would believe me. They probably will go out straight away and say, let's go, there are crazy people in here. Church, this painting proves that there is an artist. Amen. This mobile phone would prove that there are engineers and designers sitting in the Silicon Valley. There are manufacturers in China working day and night. That wonderful praise and worship, that wonderful music proves that there are singers and musicians. Amen. Hello? This Bible and any other book that you have would prove that there are writers and authors. Amen? So is the creation. It proves that there are a, there is a creator. And He is God. Amen, church? And He is God. You want the best proof that there is God? Do you want me to give you a best proof that there is God? Amen? Look at your face in the mirror. Genesis 1.26 says, He has created you according to His image. Amen, church? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ate Alice, napakaganda mo, hindi lang ngayon. But palagi. Bakit? Because there is a passage called Genesis 1.26. You are created in the image of the Lord. Amen, church? Yung hindi nakapansin yan, it's their loss. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No? My dear brothers and sisters, we are created in the image of God. And like, like the servant of the Lord says earlier, whatever burdens that you have, whatever challenges that you are going through right now, I want to tell you that you are precious in the sight of the Lord. The Lord created you in His image. The Lord created you purposely according to His will. Amen. You are not a result of accidental explosion that happens billions of years ago. If people will tell you we are a result of uh, uh, whatever explosion, whatever theory, now it is your position to tell them, fool. Amen. The fool said in his heart that there is no God. Have you heard about Voltaire? Voltaire is... Uh, uh, Voltaire is a highly intelligent and fo famous French writer, visionary, philosopher, um, uh, um, uh, and a leading atheist. Voltaire is a leading atheist during his time in the 1600s. Do you know what Voltaire said? It took 12 Jewish men. He's talking about the apostles. It took 12 Jewish men to propagate Christianity. It took 12 Jewish men to develop Christianity. And I'm going to show the world how a single Frenchman 
can destroy Christianity. I am going to show the world how a single Frenchman will deconstruct Christianity. The bottom line is, Voltaire is dead and God lives. Amen, church? A foolish man. You know, the irony is, after years when Voltaire died, the same house, the same home where he has uh, the printing press in there, after he died, after a few years, Voltaire's house became one of largest distribution centers of Bible in Europe. The same printers that print his work, his atheist work, they printed thousands of Bibles. Hello, church. And later, later, um, uh, later um, uh, acquired manuscript because Voltaire suffered stroke. And Voltaire died a terrible death. And it says in there, in the last moment of his life, Voltaire tried to be reconciled with the church. Voltaire tried to make peace with the, with the priest, Catholic church. But what happened? The wound was so deep that the church did not want to go. The wound was so deep that the priest did not go. A foolish man. He tried to reconcile with the church. He tried to reconcile with the priest. But only he has reconciled with his creator. Amen. Especially during this pandemic. How many times that I want to go to the hospital for sick visitation, but the hospital say, you are not allowed to come. But once Voltaire came to the Lord, wherever you are, you know the story of that, that the crippled man in the pool. The crippled man cannot go to the pool, therefore he cannot receive his healing. But guess what? The healer came to him. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The communist Soviet. We know before when we were growing up, the generation, we know that there is a communist Soviet, USSR, isn't it? Communist Soviet, they said that we are going to destroy Christianity within our walls. We're going to eradicate Christian within our borders. They said that we are going, the only remaining Bible, you can find it in a museum. And we will show in the television the last remaining Christian. You know what they are showing in the television documentary right now? How communist Russia failed. You know who is in the museum? Lenin, the founder. The bottom line is, Lenin is dead and God lives. Amen, church. The fool said in his heart that there is no God. If you're one of them, I'm gonna tell you, my friend, that God is real. Amen, church. God is real. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. The second fool. Jesus called this person a fool. And Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Kabaliktaran po ito nung binasa ni Sister Cherry earlier. Sister Cherry said that there was a man na when he dug a pearl in the farm, he sold everything that he had and he went and purchased that land. Amen. There was someone who found the great pearl and he sold everything that he had and went to bought that pearl. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't know what your situation at the moment. Some of you probably are student. 
Some of you probably are, um, uh, they, you are new at work. Some probably are, you are enjoying work. Some probably are your building house. Some probably you are planning to buy your first car. But I pray that as you met the Lord today, the Lord will take precedence of all the plans that you are going to make. Amen, church. It says in here, Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. I'll read it very quickly. This is the parable of the rich young fool. And he told them this parable. A ground of a certain man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, pay attention. God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but not reach towards God. In layman's term, mga kapatid, these are people who store up things that can be stolen here in earth. Things that can be damaged, destroyed, and corruptible here in earth. And they never care to star, store up wealth in heaven. Amen, church? This is the man who planned for a time, but not for eternity. He thought of himself, but not of God. He paid attention to his body. He fed his body, eat all you can, the choice food, but he did not feed his spirit. This is the man who pamper, promote, and protect that part of their lives that lives 70, 80, 90, 100 years, but they neglect that part of themselves that will live eternity, either in hell or in heaven. To those men, God says, a fool. This man told himself that, I have many years to live. But God said, tonight, I am going to require you of your soul. My dear brothers and sisters, personally, I know that you do too. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of colleagues. They were ill on a Friday. They were sent home from work and that was it. The last thing, the, the first time that you hear after that is the sad news. We have loved ones, we have family members, especially during this pandemic. How many lives who are not with us anymore this last two years because of this pandemic? Majority of us experience and encounter that COVID. And especially the first and second wave, a lot of you have testified and said that, I thought I'm not going to make it. I thought I'm not going to see you ever again. So my dear brothers and sisters, do not, don't you realize that an accident, a drunk or a texting drivers, engine or mechanical failures, a stray bullet, a burst artery, oh, we have a cardiac uh, nurse in here, a burst artery, a sudden stroke, a cardiac arrest can take you out instantly. Some people, they go to bed and they never woke up the following day. So my dear brothers and sisters, none of us are fools when we are dead. But we are fools when we are alive 
and we are living our life as if we are not going to die. And I'm gonna say you, I'm gonna repeat it again. What is the assurance that after you go out of this place later on, that you go to the road, a drunk driver will not swerve into your lane and crash into you? What assurance do you have that you go out and there's going to be an airplane plunging in you. It's probably quite, the odds are quite low, but what? who can assure of that, my dear brothers and sisters? People who feel well, no? the classmates of uh, Sister Mary and yesterday, they receive a lot of call because uh, they are told that one of their friends just vomited blood and he died instantaneously. And he was known to be healthy. I don't know, probably not. Probably he's keeping something secret. But the family said that well, we are not aware of any illness and sicknesses. What of my friend? He went to the Philippines because after this pandemic, he, he missed the Philippines. He went to the Philippines. And he's going back to the U.S. Their flight is 7 o'clock in the morning. They were heading to the airport. He died 3 o'clock in the morning of a cardiac arrest. So my dear brothers and sisters, what situation do we have? Jesus came to give us eternal life. Jesus came to give us a security. Amen, church? Jesus did not came to give us Christmas. Jesus did not came to give us a holiday. Jesus came to give us a holy life. Amen, church. If you are here right now, you are blessed. If you are here right now, you are blessed. Jesus came to give us eternal life. Jesus came to save His people from their sins. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the life that we, li we live after this is so much longer, is so much bigger. That is why it is called eternity. You might live here, the Bible said, the life of man is 120 years. Let's ask the older population, they will tell you, as if yesterday, I am still a young child like you. As if yesterday, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are on about protecting, pampering, if you are on about being too cautious to try to <clears throat> try to preserve this life for another seven years, another ten years, another fifteen years, my dear brothers and sisters, that is not the object. You may die of COVID. A lot of people has. You may die of cardiac arrest. You may die of old age. You may die 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Or you may die 100 years. So what? The object is, Jesus said, Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to meet your maker? Like this fool, my dear brothers and sisters, he has everything that he has. But when he met Jesus, as opposed to the passage that Sister Cherry read, when he met Jesus, just like some people probably would do, but I pray that that will not happen to us. If this is the first time that we hear the word of the Lord, or if we have heard the word of the Lord before and we are reading it, we are hearing it again this time, my dear brothers and sisters, hold on to the Lord. Hold on to Christ. Hold on to that salvation. Hold on to that grace. Hold on to that mercy of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah! If it 
something happens to you, are you ready to prepare? Are you prepared to meet your maker? Hallelujah, church. Amen. The third one is an absolute fool. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, verses 33 to 34, if you open your Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 3, <clears throat> verses 33 to 34. The third fool is the absolute fool. In the king lamented for Abner, saying, the king is King David. We're talking about King David. And the king lamented for Abner, saying, should Abner dies as a fool dies. Your hands were not bound. Your feet were not fettered. Or they are not in shackles. As one falls before the wicked you have fallen, and all the people wept again over him. My dear brothers and sisters, look at your hands. Are your bound? Are your hands tied? Are your feet in shackles? Are you being are you being dragged? Pinipilit ka ba? In the same way that David said, Abner, you died a fool's death. You have all the decision, you have all the capacity to make that decision. No one is forcing you. Your hands are not tied. Your feet are not in shackles. They are not feathered. But Abner, you died as a fool died. My dear brothers and sisters. No? So an atheist fool says pretty much, there is no God. An ambitious fool says, I do not have time for God. I am busy chasing my wealth. I am busy chasing a house. I am busy chasing a car. I am busy chasing this, chasing that. I have already a sack of money sitting in there and I am on the second sack. But my dear brothers and sisters, who is this absolute fool? Who is this absolute fool? A little background to the story. If you <clears throat> go home later on, read 2 Samuel chapter 1, 2, and 3, or even 4, it's the story extended in there. You know, our message last time, we end in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Amen? Uh, when David strengthened himself in the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we told last time that the full force of Philistine is going to war with Israel, with King Saul. Amen? And in that war, it shows that King Saul was defeated and King Saul together with his three sons who are general in the army as well were killed. Amen? And here, the fourth son of Saul and the commander of Saul army called Abner. I'm sure we, we, we talk about Abner before. And Abner, my dear brothers and sisters, is the commander of King Saul's army. Amen. And when King Saul and his three sons died, Abner put in place the son of Saul called Isbosheth as king. Amen. But we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that the kingdom of Israel is divided in two parts. The northern kingdom, or it is called the kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is called the kingdom of Judah. And we say that the kingdom of Judah, they proclaim David as their king. But the northern tribe, the kingdom of Israel, Abner proclaimed Isbosheth, one of Saul's son, as king. So my dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of infighting. There are a lot of civil war in battle between the northern and the southern kingdom. And we can see that the southern kingdom or the tribe of Judah is winning these battles. Amen? Nananalo po si King David. So here we can see that the, the northern kingdom is becoming weaker and weaker. And what did 
Abner, uh, and what did Abner do? Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. They keep on fighting together. And in one occasion that they are going to fight, King David said, Brethren, they are all Israelites, remember? King David said, Brethren, let us spare lives from both of us. Rather than fighting together, choose from among you 12 men and 12 men in our side and let them fight together. Amen. It's a noble thing to do, isn't it? It's a noble thing to do. So that's what happened, my dear brothers and sisters. 12 chosen warriors from the northern tribes, 12 chosen warriors from the southern tribe, and they fought with each other. And Abner was one of them. And there is this guy called Asahel who was chasing Abner. Amen. Asahel was chasing Abner. And Abner said, Is that you, Asahel? Don't chase me. Go and find someone else. Why? Because Abner said, You are no match to me. You are no match to me, Asahel. You are younger than me. I am more experienced than you. I respect you. So Abner said, Asahel, Go turn around and chase someone else. Do not chase after me. But Asahel was very persistent. And in the bid of uh, Abner to fend off Asahel, he's running with a spear. His spear is faced that way. And his desire to fend off Asahel, he pushed his, his spear backwards. No? To fend off Asahel. But unfortunately, that spear pierce the tummy of Asahel, it came out at the back and Asahel died there and then. Amen? People chase Abner, but Abner eventually escaped. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, no? The next thing that happened is the kingdom of the North Kingdom is becoming weaker and weaker. So what did, King, what did Abner de, did? Abner plotted a rebellion against his king Isbushet. Abner plotted a coup d'etat against his king Isbushet. He came to the southern kingdom. He came to David and say, David, we want you to be king all of Israel. David, we want you to be king all over Israel. I talked to the elders, I talked to the other generals, and I persuaded them that we want you to be king. We will take away Isbushet. We will kill Isbushet away, and you will be king of a united kingdom of Israel. So, my dear brothers and sisters, no? This is what happened. This is what happened. No? Abner kind of forgot. That he killed who? Asahel. And the thing is, Asahel is a brother of Joab. And Bible reader, who is Joab? David's top military man. And in Israel, they have this law that is called the avenger of blood. What does that law, avenger of blood, means? That means, my dear brothers and sisters, it allows the next of kin of a killed family member to go and take revenge. It allows the next of kin to go and track down the killer of his family member to avenge his death. What did the Lord says? A life for a life. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is not only allowed, but this is lawful. This is what is written in the law of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, Abner forgot this thing and he went to David. He forgot that he killed someone. He forgot that Joab is the avenger of that. And Abner said that, I don't mind as long as I am doing good things. As long as I am doing connections with David. How many of us in here 
I don't mind about my sin as long as I am doing more good than bad. As long as I am making connections with religion, I do not have to think about my sin. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Makikita natin dito, no? We can say, my dear brothers and sisters, that Abner was killed by Joab. Amen? Let's say that like Abner, let's say that like Abner, he killed someone in wartime that was not planned, that was not premeditated. He even tried to fend Asahel away, but Asahel did not listen. So let's say, my dear brothers and sisters, that a, ki a person killed with innocence, a person killed by accident, it is not intentional, it is not planned, it is not premeditated, there is no ill emotions involved, but the person will still be hunted, my dear brothers and sisters, by the avenger of blood. Amen? But the good thing is, if a person killed someone by accident, in this case, like Abner, my dear brothers and sisters, they have six cities to run. Three cities in the east of Jordan, three cities in the west side of Jordan. And if a person killed someone innocently, they can run to these cities to take shelter. These six cities together with 42 other cities, priests and Levites lives, my dear brothers and sisters. And these six cities are called cities of refuge. By the term implied, city of refuge. So if you accidentally kill someone like Abner, you can run to the city of refuge and tell the priests in Levites that I killed someone by innocent. I killed someone by accident. Can I take shelter with you while you sort things out? And my dear brothers and sisters, this priest will take you in. This priest will take you in. They will stand in the gate and they will tell to the avenger of blood, you cannot kill this person. It is the law of the Lord. Amen. See this of refuge. Now going back, why Abner's death was a foolish death? Because Abner died in the gates of Hebron, which is a city of refuge. Amen, church? That's the reason why David said, Abner, your hands are not tied, your feet are not shackles, you could just have at least what? Step inside the gate, and you will be saved. You could have at least step inside the gate, and you will be saved. Amen, church? So da, Abner died a foolish death. My dear brothers and sisters, no? This is very interesting because Abner thinks that, oh, it was fine. I am cool. As long as I am go making connections with David, as long as I am doing more good and bad, even the fact that I killed somebody, but my dear brothers and sisters, the avenger of death has a law to carry out. Amen. Abner died a foolish death. All you have to do, Abner, is to get in, step into the city of refuge, and the avenger of death won't be able to take you out. Amen, church. That is the reason why David was weeping. And he was saying, Abner, you knew better. You know that Job, the avenger of death, will come after you. You know that if you kill someone, the avenger of death will come and kill you. Abner, you knew the city of refuge. You know that Hebron is a city of refuge. You know that God 
provided the city of refuge for your safety and for your salvation. And instead of doing more good than bad, instead of doing more connections with religion, just step in to the city of refuge. Just run to the city of refuge. How many Abners are in here today? How many Abners are in here today? I want to tell people in this place today. I want to tell people to those people who are watching us online and to those people that will watch this worship service in the future. Jesus Christ is our city of refuge. Amen? Jesus is our city of refuge. Hallelujah. 2,000 years ago, God established a city of refuge for you, for me, and for everyone. And His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, any sinner, no matter what you have done, even if you murdered, even if you committed abortion, even if you were abused, as a victim or a perpetrator, there is enough blood to wash your sins. Amen? There is enough blood to restore you to God. There is enough grace. There is enough mercy. Amen, church? Even if you fornicated, even if you committed infidelity, even if you committed adultery, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ to wash you. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ to forgive you. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came to save the sinners from their sins. Amen. And if you knew me, I'm not ashamed to stand here and say, I am the worst of them. But I praise the Lord because I have the city of refuge to step into. Amen, church. Do not die in the gate of the city. You have come this far to know the Lord. You have come this far to know Jesus. It is not an accident and coincidence that you are with us today. It is not an accident and coincidence that you are watching online with us today. You have come this far. All you have to do is step inside that city of Hebron. Step inside that city of refuge. All you need to do is submit and surrender to Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is like a city of refuge. Because this city is like what we've said, six cities in total. Three in the east side of Jordan, three in the west side of Jordan, my dear brothers and sisters. Just like Jesus, this city of refuge is provided by God. They have the power to save. They have the power to keep you safe. They are available to everyone. And they are accessible for anyone. Amen, church. But I am here to tell you that Jesus is better than the city of refuge. Jesus is better than the city of refuge. Because you see, in order to be saved in the city of refuge, in order to be safe in the city of refuge, you need to get into it. Amen. You need to get into it. Abner is standing in the gate of the city and he was not spared. My dear brothers and sisters, you need to get into the city. And if the avenger of death is faster than you, if the avenger of death ambush you just as you enter the city, the avenger of death can still kill you. Amen? 
the avenger of death can still kill you. But Jesus Christ is better than the city of death, than the city of refuge. My dear brothers and sisters, because Jesus said, you don't have to get to me. You don't have to come to me. I can come to you. I can get to you. Jesus said, all you get to do is call upon me and you will be saved. Romans 10.13, those who will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen, church. Those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You might be in your deathbed. You might be in the hospital. You might be in the intensive care unit. You might be in your drug house. You might be in a prostitution house. You might be in the lowest moment of your life. You might be in the biggest frustration of your life. But Jesus said, all you have to do is call upon me and you will be saved. You might be, you might met an accident in your car and you, no help is coming. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. You probably has a disease, illness, cancer, and the doctor says you only have a few weeks to live. Jesus said, Call upon my name and you will be saved. Those who will call upon my name will be saved. Amen. You might not be able to get to church. You might be hanging at the last breath of your life. You might be hanging on the cross and the only word that you can say is, Jesus, remember me. But the promise of the Lord is, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. Today, you have stepped in to the city of refuge. Amen, church. I am better than the city of refuge, Jesus said, because I can come to your salvation. I can come to your situation. I can come wherever you are. I can come to the middle of your problems. I can come to the middle of your frustration. I can come to the middle of your dilemma. I can be there. If you fall and the devil is tracking you down, the Lord said, call upon me and you will be saved. That promise is given for you, church. Without any exemption. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Amen. Not only Jesus is better because He is available all the time. But like what we've said, the city of refuge works only if you are innocent. The city of refuge works only if you are innocent. If you came to the city of refuge and you are not innocent, the priests and the Levites would say, I'm sorry. You were guilty. You planned that murder. You premeditated that murder. I'm sorry. You desire to kill that person. The priests and the Levites, the city of refuge, will spew you out. You will be taken out of the city of refuge. The city of refuge works only for innocent people. But my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ's blood, He said, I did not come for the righteous. Amen, church? My city works for the guilty. I am a lawyer for the guilty. Amen? My blood is for the sinner. My blood is for those who were stained with their guilt. 
My blood is for those who were unworthy to lift their head and beat their chest and say, God, I am a sinner. Jesus said, I am better than the city of refuge because I came for the guilty. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Maybe you are here today and you were once like me and you have done something bad and you feel guilty about it and you are walking like a condemned man. John 3.17 says, Jesus did not came to condemn us but to save us. Jesus does not need to condemn us. You know why? Why is that? Why Jesus does not need to condemn you or me? Why? Because we are already a condemned man. We are a sinner and a sinner. We are already a condemned man. But Jesus said, I did not came to condemn you, my friend. I came to save you. Hallelujah. Maybe you are here today and once you knew the Lord, like Sister Teresa, hallelujah for your life. If you once knew the Lord and once experienced a relationship with Him, but the deception of this world has pulled you apart from the Lord, that you have backslidden from the Lord, James chapter 4, verse 8, it says in there, Come to me, and I will come to you. Draw to me. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Hallelujah, church. Today, he is ready. Do not go about your life as usual. If you, this is your first time coming to the Lord, if, this is, if you haven't been in a good standing with the Lord, the Lord is ready for you. People who are tuning in online, people who will come across this message at a later time. The Lord is ready for us today. Don't go about continuing our life. Don't numb it by our job, by working too much. Don't numb it with your good works. Don't numb it with religion. Don't numb it with alcohol. Don't numb it with drugs. Don't numb it with vices. Don't numb it trying to do good more than bad. The only thing that you can do is run to the city of refuge. Lay hold of Christ. Lay hold of salvation. Amen, church? Lay hold of His grace. Lay hold of His mercy. He is willing and He is ready to save you. Amen, church? Abner, if there are Abner in here, you don't want to die like a fool, man. You are so close to the gate of Hebron. The Lord brought you to church. You just have to step into Christ. All you need to do, my dear brothers and sisters, is step into the city of refuge. Amen. Can we welcome back the music team? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, church. Praise you, Lord. Can I invite each and everyone to stand up? This is the application of the word of the Lord that we have heard for the last hour. The atheist fool said, 
pretty much there is no God. The ambitious fool said, I am too busy. I want to continue with my life. I'm happy with who I am. I am happy where I am. But the absolute fool says, You came into the gate of the city of refuge and you failed to step inside. It is not an accident or coincidence. Maybe you are here today because your friend, your family invited you. Maybe you are here today because of the birthday celebration. But it is not an accident and coincidence, my friend, that you came to the house of the Lord today. It is not an accident or coincidence that the Lord brought you in His house today. There are a lot of Abner who are standing here today, people online. All you need to do, your feet are not shackles, your arms are not bound. All you need to do is step into that city of refuge. All you need to do is grab hold of Christ. Hallelujah! Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 says, Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. As hardening your heart, the Lord will deem it as a rebellion. Today, I want to ask you to take Jesus in. Embrace Christ right now. Embrace Christ's salvation right now. Don't die in the gates of Hebron because you and I do not know when we're gonna die. It is better to embrace Christ today, not tomorrow, because we do not know what will happen tonight in your sleep. Not next week, because we do not know what will happen tomorrow. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Romans 10.9 If you confess in your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him up from the dead, you are saved. You will be in the city of refuge. You have stepped into Christ. So there is no complicated formula, my dear brothers and sisters. With all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, confess in your mouth and say that, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, I am a sinner. But I am confessing in my mouth that you are Lord that you are the God of my life. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. Don't be a fool, my dear friends. Church, do not go out of this worship place today without entering the city of refuge. Without stepping into Christ, you have come as close as the gate. All you need to do is step in. All you need to do is accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. As the music team usher us, I just want us all to be in the presence of the Lord. Just close your eyes. Be connected to your heart. And let that still, small voice talk to you.
Lord is talking to you. talking to you, my friend, my brother, my sister. Do not neglect that voice talking to you right now. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. right now and this is between you and the Lord this is between you and the Lord Holy Spirit, if that still small voice is leading you to step into the city of refuge, is leading you to accept Christ, I want to invite you. I want to invite you to raise your hands and just say that I believe, I feel that still small voice, the Holy Spirit is talking to me right now. All eyes close. All eyes close. Or if you have been with the Lord, if you have been with the Lord and you have gone away for a while and the Lord is inviting you back, I encourage you if that still small voice is talking to you right now, just lift up those hands. Just lift up those hands as a sign of commitment, as a sign of surrender to the Lord. It is better to do it here in the midst of believers, in the midst of Christians, who can understand and support you rather than in the world. If you cannot do in the presence of Christians and believers, I will tell you, you will never have the courage to do it in the world. As we sing that song again, I surrender, let's make that commitment to the Lord. You and me are both condemned men. And it is for you and me that Christ came. Because Christ came for the sinner. Christ came for the guilty. Step into the city of refuge, friends. When 
the Titanic song. And the lifeboats are arriving in the shore. Inside the Titanic, where the rich people, where the poor people, were kings, were rich people, but when the lifeboat came to the shore, there's only two people, the same in the lost. Today, there are whites, there are puti, there are itim, there are Filipinos. There are rich, there are poor. But after today, there are only two kinds of people. Those who were fools and those who were wise. Don't be full, my friend. Surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, can I just ask each and everybody to just close their eyes? Close their eyes. Let's take this commitment. And to those people who were touched by the Lord, no one is looking. I am not even looking, so I don't know who you are. This is between you and the Lord. And if you want to commit your life to the Lord, if you want to step into the city of refuge, no one is looking. It is between you and the Lord. We're not trying to call you. Lift up your hands and be counted. And say that, Lord, I want to step into the city of refuge. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Jesus, our city of refuge, honor the desire of your people. Honor the surrender of these people, Jesus. As these people, Lord, all eyes are closed. As these people, Father, have lifted their hands to you and they want to be counted, Father God. And they are declaring in their mouth that Jesus is Lord. And they believe in their heart that Christ has raised, uh, that you have raised Christ from the dead. That they have stepped into the city of your refuge. Of which no other than Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for their salvation. Thank you, Lord, for their protection. Thank you, Lord, for their safety. Thank you, Lord, for their security. And thank you, Father. Because they can step out of this building today wise rather than fool. Thank you very much, Father God. And Father, if there are people, Father God, who are still digesting that, Lord, and they want to have some more moment with you, and if you are that person, go back, go home and just go back to this message. Just go home and pray to the Lord and say that, Lord, who are you? I did not understand more than half of that word. Would you mind telling it to me? Would you mind explaining it to me once again? And I know and I do believe Jesus said, you do not have to come to me because I can come to you. Even in the great difficulty, even in your ordeal, Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Inaalay namin, Panginoon, ang lahat-lahat sa iyo. Inaalay namin, Panginoon, ang aming buhay, ang aming oras, ang aming pagkakataon, ang aming resources, Father God. Lord, receive it. Receive it. Father, sa mga tao, yung mga for the first time, they offer their life to you. They rededicated their life to you. Father, receive their heart. Receive their life, Father. Allow them entry into the gate of your city of refuge. To the city of refuge. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Lord, can we just give a couple of